dear viewers, welcome to this new window through which I will be meeting you all with my fresh videos. Today's topic is about mechanism of localization of radio pharmaceuticals in the first part. Now we all know about radio pharmaceuticals as diagnostic or therapeutic tools. The pharmaceutical is the one which carries this radioactivity to the region of interest, but how does it carry? How does, does, does this team reach that location in different mechanisms of which are going to be shown in this presentation? So today I will be starting with the contents here and that is what is the significance of this topic? What are the goals of the diagnostic? and therapeutic radiopharmaceuticals and what are the different routes of administration and some types of localizing mechanism will be shown in this presentation. Firstly, what is the significance of this topic to understand the possible interventions and applying it during the nuclear medicine procedures like LASIKS intervention in the diuretic renal study using 99M technician DTP. Why is it used and what is the uh, reason to know the mechanism of uh, uptake of DTP and clearance has to be understood. And for the patient preparation of various nuclear medicine studies, for example, for the FDG PET scan, why the patient has to come fasting? Why do we need to know the glucose levels? All this will be understood if you know the uptake method of fluorodeoxyglucose, that is the FDG. And then for the designing, evaluating and optimizing the new potential radiopharmaceutical for animal studies and for the further clinical trials. All this is nothing but the biological study to know the uptake or the method in which the radiopharmaceutical reaches the region of interest. Now the goals of diagnostic and therapeutic radiopharmaceuticals. Firstly, highlighting the organ or region to be studied and evaluating the altered or abnormal biodistribution is the goal for diagnostic radiopharmaceutical, while for the therapeutic radiopharmaceutical, it is the biological targeting towards the abnormal tissue and avoiding such effect on the surrounding normal tissue. So this should be the goal for the therapeutic radiopharmaceutical. Now, what are the different routes of administration? The mostly used route is the intravenous for the diagnostic radiopharmaceuticals, that is the technetium 99M, which is a workhorse, you know, the radiopharmaceuticals labeled with this radioactivity is mostly intravenously administered, while the oral route is used for the classical example of this is irene 131 uh, for the therapeutic high dose or low dose stud, uh, therapy can be in this oral form in the form of capsule or liquid but it is oral now the nasogastric route is used for gastroesophageal reflux studies of small babies neonatal babies also so that the reflux or in the esophageal uh, gas esophagus from the stomach maybe uh, is it there or no this kind of diagnosis can be done in neonatal babies too and so for that nasogastric route is used and the interdigital web space as you can see here that is the route for subcutaneous route for lymphocytographic studies to see any blockages while the inhalation can be done or the mouth inhalation is also done for airways filling for ventilation studies so these are the most common routes there can be some rare routes like suprapubic route for the direct vesicular reflux study but these are the most common ones the intravenous being the really uh, most used one now for the types of localization that we are going to see in this presentation will be what is passive diffusion, filtration, facilitated diffusion, metabolism, active transport, 
compartmental localization and cell sequestration. Before starting all this, we have to know that localization of a radiopharmaceutical in the region of interest may involve more than one mechanisms, like a mechanical uh, engineer or a mechanic can use any type of not only one tool, any tool, more than one tool to uh, fix up the job. Similarly, this kind of different mechanisms can be used or another example like if you have to reach a particular destination, you may use different transport systems, you may use uh, different buses. So to reach the same one particular destination, it may not be one single route. So this way, the radio pharmaceutical also to reach its address can use more than one mechanism. So firstly, let us see the passive diffusion. It is movement of the molecules from higher concentration to the lower one through the membranes with concentration gradient to finally achieve the uniform concentration. So the importance is higher concentration to the lower concentration. So in such cases, there's no energy required, no carrier or facilitator required, it is non-selective and no competition because there is no carrier or anything to which the uh, concerned molecule is going to be competing with any other. So this example of tea bag, uh, if you see that uh, the flavor of the tea can get diffused into the water uh, through this kind of tea bag, but uh, without leaving the uh, tea leaves inside, that will be constant staying inside but the diffusion of the of all those material molecules which can pass through this uh, porous bag can reach the uh, can get diffused into the liquid so this diffusibility depends on lipid solubility of the molecule and whose charged state depends on the ph of the environment so for this, the example is 99M technetium MIB uptake, methoxy isobutyl isonitrile by myocardium. And so this is the example where the myocardial perfusion can be uh, assessed using the technetium agent. Now, filtration is another method. This is also a type of diffusion involving transit of molecules through pores or channels driven by a hydrostatic or osmotic pressure gradient. So there is, it is quite a type of a diffusion where a sieve or something which filters out and allows some specific molecules to go through, which are smaller than these pores, will be uh, the method or mechanism, which is seen in glomerular filtration using 99, that uh, Radio pharmaceutical used 99M technician DTPA to find the functional uh, aspect or functional status of both the kidneys in the quantification level also. And this is where it happens. The diagram here I've shown is the nephron unit with the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus where the actual exchange happens. Rather, the, all those uh, excretable and filterable things, molecules will come out. And this 19 technetium DTP is also one of them. So we can find out the normalcy of the kidneys if at all there is any altered biodistribution or altered excretion mode that also can be identified. Now what is facilitated diffusion where the carrier mediated transport across the membranes. Like here you can see the revolving door. If one person wants to go inside, he can just hold the uh, one door and this will revolve, this can be pushed and here just holding that door itself can be uh, facilitating to get inside. So this kind of carrier mediated transport can be seen and this is selective because it will be only those which can hold this door will be going inside. Similarly, those which can be uh, taken up by the carrier, the carrier holding the carrier will get the entry. So this is how you can see here, but then they are also going to face competitive inhibitions because there will be some similar molecules which can hold this carrier and get inside. So this kind of competition is 
possible. Now this example here is 18 fluorodeoxyglucose as I had told you initially about its competition with blood glucose that is entering via the transmembrane protein transporters GLUT. So as the requirement to have very low glucose level in the blood is for this reason so that the inhibition of the radio tracer to get inside the region of interest will not be there. So this is why you have to need to know the glucose levels and keep it low for the patient. Now metabolism, biotransformation of the tracer to the intermediate compounds through the biochemicals reactions inside the cell. So this is what there can be different biochemical reactions in the met hypermetabolic area like liver and brain. And in such areas, if you want to want them to concentrate in metabolic hypermetabolic areas, this will be the method. And again, the example of 18 fluorodeoxyglucose can be given, which is now using the second mechanism after once it has entered using the uh, facilitated diffusion mode. Uh, then it gets trapped here because it uh, is considered as glucose by hexokinase enzyme, which considers it as uh, glucose and converts this 18-FDG into 18-FDG 6-phosphate. However, the next enzyme, glucose 6-phosphatase, does not identify it because it only wants, it is very specific to glucose, and so this does not get uh, into the glycolytic pathway however it gets trapped inside the cell good for the scan that is why we can find out the hypermetabolic areas of course the brain and all will up, take up but the cancer cells which are hypermetabolic too will be picking up the tracer now the, we have to know about what is the active transport where the Carrier mediation is here too. The transport is with the carrier, but this carrier needs energy. That is adenosine triphosphate, the currency of the cells will be utilized. And this is also possible. So against the concentration gradient also, this kind of mechanism can occur. So this will be because it is a carrier mediated selective and it will have competitive inhibition. To, if there are any similar molecules, then this kind of transport also gets affected or you can say inhibited. So here also the same revolving door you can uh, consider, but where a motorized revolving door where this requires energy, the carrier himself requires energy to move. It will not be pushed manually or something, but it needs energy and so that will cause the uh, active transport of the radio pharmaceutical from outside to inside the cell. Examples of this kind of transport is iodine-131 and 99 m pertechnetate uptake by the thyroid and 201 thallium uptake by myocardium. Now for the compartmental localization where molecules of interest are localized in an enclosed volume or compartment. So the activity, radioactivity stays in the compartment and does not move anywhere. It will get equally distributed and it is assumed that it is homogeneously distributed in the compartment. Now the non-uniformity within the compartment is that abnormal distribution and that indicates the pathophysiology. If at all, the, it's in, in that color, that concentration of our radioactivity is in a place where it is, should not be there, where the, for example, if it is uh, supposed to be in blood, then it should not be in a particular organ where it should not be there. So this is the outer bar distribution, which can be identified in, for example, hemangiomas. Now the blood pool, airways or cerebrospinal space, these can be considered the compartments and they can be studied. Now, if there is any leakage or identification of the blood filled spaces like hemangioma, I have already told you, leakage is of gastrointestinal bleeding, for example, then that also can be got in case of blood pool study. Another important example of blood pool study where 99M technetium labeled red blood cells uh, are used 
in the gated blood pool study where cardiac ejection fraction can be calculated the, where the end diastolic and end systolic uh, volumes can be drawn or the region of interest can be drawn around them and the volume can be estimated or found out by using the graph and the quantification can be done to know how normal is the cardiac function the left ventricular cardiac ejection fraction now next is about cell sequestration firstly what is sequestration it is detachment or separation like old or damaged cells will be removed for replenishment by the spleens a damaged red red blood cells and they will be removed from the circulation by the spleen so this kind of its uh, utility or use its role can be used to detect it's that spleen itself in that is the accessory spleens when you have actually the spleen has been removed splenectomy has been done and after that if there is any ectopic accessory spleen this can be found out by uh, using heat denatured 99 technetium rbc's red blood cells where the these rbc's are removed from the patient's body itself and then they are denatured by heating them at 49 degrees celsius for 15 minutes and re-injected to this patient and uh, then scanned and you may uh, be able to catch this accessory spleens if any if any and so if they are ectopic though so this is not the right ectopic in the sense where they are from different place their position is different from normal so this is the use of cell sequestration method now the summary of our presentation will be like this mm, we have seen what is the significance and what are the goals of diagnostic and therapeutic ready pharmaceuticals what are the different routes of administration and some mechanisms that we have seen here are passive diffusion the filtration facilitated diffusion metabolism active transport compartmental localization and cell sequestration so the type of localization for part two that we are going to see will be phagocytosis receptor binding capillary blockade cell migration ion exchange and chemisorption so the references i have used for these are gopal b saha's fundamental of nuclear pharmacy it's kind of a uh, bible for nuclear pharmacy uh, students and the very interesting and very useful uh, art sub article of mechanisms of radio pharmaceutical localization published in the volume 16 lesson 4 um, for unm from by unm college of pharmacy and the author by being james a ponto thank you